Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion of Christoffel symbols. If we're given a covariant basis EI, we'd say I goes from 1 to n for example, I goes from 1 to n, give me an n-dimensional space, then we can construct a contravariant basis by raising the indices by considering the metric tensor GIJ is EI dot EJ. So I have a contravariant, uh, two covariant vector, the Romanian tensor, this is our Romanian tensor, metric tensor. And of course I can construct EI upper, EI upper is going to be what? It's going to be GIJ upper, GIJ upper, and then EJ lower, like that. So in other words, I can raise the index by hitting this with the inverse of the matrix, right? So of course, what is this matrix over here where GIJ upper this, if I look at this as a matrix over here, the inverse of this matrix over here is going to be GIJ lower, right? In other words, it's the inverse of the original metric tensor, okay? Which I know is positive definite, and all the eigenvalues are non, it's non degenerate. So, in other words, I can assume that this is actually a basis, right? So, in other words, the grand matrix is non degenerate. There's no zero eigenvalues. So this matrix actually is invertible over here. Excellent. So, I have a covariant basis. And so, now what I want to do, let's suppose that these, this covariant basis actually comes from an underlying set of coordinates. Suppose further. that the covariant basis EIJ depends on coordinates UI, where I goes from 1 to n. And now these coordinates may be orthogonal curvilinear coordinates, or they may be just general coordinates, right? So they need not be orthogonal, okay? Okay, excellent. And so now what I want to do is I want to ask the question, how do these covariant vectors change with respect to the coordinates, right? In other words, it could be partial derivatives. And so what I can do is I'm going to define define some symbols. I'm going to look at the partial of EI, the covariant vector EI, with respect to the coordinate UJ, that partial derivative, is going to be gamma of I, J, K, E, K like this. In other words, I know that these partial derivatives over here are can be expressed in terms of this covariant basis, and these coefficients in this covariant basis are called these Christoffel symbols. So gamma I, K is called the Christoffel symbol. Okay, so the Christoffel symbol depends on three parameters, I, J, and K, okay? Now, one immediate thing we get, one immediate consequence we get of this definition is that since, with respect to these coordinates, since EI is partial of R with respect to UI, like this, and when, we're, when we make this assumption that they depend on these coordinates, UI, we're making the assumption that these EIs arise from the vector field of position, right? So they're, they're the natural coordinates. Since this is the case, we have that partial EI partial UJ is the same as partial EJ partial UI like that, and that allows me to conclude from this, this these Christoffel symbols, this implies immediately that gamma of IJK is equal to gamma of JIK, and so there's an implicit symmetry in this, okay? Now, of course, how can I compute these Christoffel symbols? Well, I'm going to compute these Christoffel symbols in the following way. So the first elementary form of computing them comes from the following relationship. So question, how do we compute these things? So notice... Notice what? That I'll get partial EI, partial UJ, and I dot this with EL upper, the contravariant basis with respect to these coefficients over here. Then this becomes what? This is the same thing as gamma of IJK, IJK, EK, 
ek up, ek lower, dot el upper, and this is exactly equal to gamma ijk of delta and then a k and then l. So I can replace k's with l's over here. And so, um, and so what do we get? And so we get this is going to be a gamma of ijl. And this tells me that to compute these gamma of ijl's, I have gamma of ijl is going to be equal to what? Gamma of ijl is going to be equal to this formula over here. Partial of ei with respect to uj, and then dot el upper like this. So that gives me one representation of how we compute these Christoffel symbols in terms of the dot product of these derivatives with respect to a contravariant. So these things over here are covariants, and these things over here are contravariant vectors. Now we can also make the following observation. So note also, since partial, and I'm going to look at ek, ek upper, dot e, let's say, um, el lower, with respect to what? With respect to, I'm going to do this over here. I want to get, make a calculation over here with respect to these coordinates. I'm going to do this with respect to um, partial uj, for example. Partial uj. And I'm going to put actually um, an i over here. So let's be a little bit more careful with this. Let's actually change these coordinates a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to find a different representation in terms of the contravariant components over here. So how are we going to do that? So what I want to do is I want to observe that if I look at partial, if I look at ei dot, dot ek upper, el, I'll say el upper, that's going to be delta il, right? So if I do the partial of this with respect to uj, for example, right? And I subtract off what? If I subtract off, well, if I did this, if I do, if I do the first dot the derivative of the second, then what we're going to have over there, if I sub I don't want the el term over here, so this is really going to be minus el. So let's make sure we're doing this correctly. So if I did the, the partial derivative of this thing, let's write out what these things are going to be, just to make sure we're doing this completely correctly. This expression over here is going to be equal to ei dot was dot partial el upper, and then partial uj lower, and then plus el upper dot partial ej lower, e uj upper, right? So that's going to be equal to, so what we're going to do is, if I subtract off this expression over here, so subtract this off from ei lower dot partial el upper, partial uj, then what this is over here is all that's going to be left is this expression over here, right? So if I subtract that off, then we get by the product rule, this is going to be el upper, of course, that's a vector. So el upper dot what? dot partial e j lower over partial u j, okay? So in other words, I just use the product rule with the subtraction over here, and now I know exactly what this thing is over here, right? This is exactly by definition is going to be what? If I look at this, this is going to be gamma of i j l, right? Now this, of course, is the delta function, so this derivative is equal to zero, right? So since since partial delta il partial uj is equal to zero, this term over here is actually going to vanish, right? Even though formally it gives me this calculation. And so this allows me to conclude that, del that gamma of ijl can be computed in this form as well over here. Is really what? Is really negative ei lower dot partial el upper over partial u, j, like this. And so I get an alternative way of computing Christoffel symbols in terms of the dot product of what? In terms of the dot product of a covariant vector with respect to the derivative of a contravariant vector or the derivative of a covariant vector dot the derivative of a contravariant vector. So there's this implicit symmetry. And we're going to see in further videos that there's actually lots of symmetry in these Christoffel symbols. In particular, when I have repeated indices, I get sort of special formulas. When I have orthogonal curve linear coordinates, I get special formulas. When I have sort of one variable depending on another, I get special formulas. So we really want to focus on this, this fundamental idea, though, that compute these Christoffel symbols, we really need to compute the derivative of the covariant vector ei with respect to a coordinate uj and then dot that with a contravariant component. Or if you don't like dotting with a contravariant component, you can dot with a covariant component at the expense of doing the partial derivative with respect to a contravariant vector. So in either case, you're able to find a nice formula for these Christoffel symbols. And in further videos, we'll, express, we'll find further properties and further formulas for finding the, these Christoffel symbols in terms of the differentials of the metric tensor. 
Thank you very much.